The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned, and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Merida. Merida enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big I am Silver! For several weeks, Tipsy Malone and Tar Farrell had been on the dodge after escaping from state's prison. They were standing at the bar of the Trailside Tavern in the town of Sandstone when Tipsy observed a young man over six feet tall moving toward them. The shining badge the man had pinned to his vest prompted Tipsy to say, Take it easy, Tar. Here comes the law. So I see. Play possum and maybe we won't have to shoot our way out of here. Right. When did you Mavericks hit town? Recent. What's your business here? We're just passing through. Well, drink up and get moving. Yeah, just a minute, Tin Star. We just got here. You got no right to run us out of town. Don't give me any of your lip. Move. Get going. Hey, let me finish my drink. I said move. Oh. Come on, Tar. Let's get out of here. We're not looking for trouble. All right. I guess he means business. And if I catch you in town again, I'll throw you into jail. <laughs> Why'd you run them out, bud? Ah, they look like a couple of tramps to me. Maybe bumming drinks the next thing you know. Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, had been on the trail of the two outlaws. A few miles from town, the masked man and Indian had made camp, but the saddle remained on the back of the great horse, Silver. Why you leave saddle and Silver, Kimasabi? It will be dark by the time we finish supper, then I'm going to ride into town. Oh, you look for Tipsy Malone, Tar Farrell? No, Toto, they might recognize me in spite of a disguise. And why you go to town? I want to see Sheriff Jim Whalen and tell him who I'm looking for. He can search the town. I don't like to interfere in a lawman's domain. They resent it. That's right. Me fix supper. The Lone Ranger established his identity with a silver bullet and won the confidence of Sheriff Jim Whalen. When he explained his mission, Sheriff Whalen reached into the drawer of his desk and brought out a handbill. I got a handbill on those two just a couple of days ago now. The reward for them has been boosted up to $5,000. They have the appearance of being more or less harmless. But don't be fooled by it, Sheriff. When and if you meet them, they'll strike you just as quickly and just as deadly as a rattlesnake. Well, you seem to know. Well, I've captured them twice. 
And twice they've escaped from prison. I uh, have a young deputy named Bud Titus. I better warn him about those two. Warn him? Yes. Bud will make a good lawman one of these days, but right now he's overconfident to the point of being careless. It'll pay him to be careful with Tipsy Malone and Tar Farrell. Hey, here he comes now. Perhaps it'd be better for him not to see me, Sheriff. If he's inclined to be careless, he might talk. Yes, that's right. Just step in the side room there. I'll get rid of him in a few minutes. All right, I'll be waiting. Yeah, hello, Bud. Uh, what are you laughing about? <laughs> I just ran a couple of hombres out of town about an hour ago. Threw them out of the trailside tavern. Yes, what for? Yeah, they were a couple of tramps. Hadn't shaved in a month, and they were covered with dust and grime. Did they have any money on them, bud? I didn't take the time to find out. Why? Uh, look, you can't run people out of town. Hey, hey, don't want you doing that again, bud. <laughs> All right, Sheriff. And I won't if you say so. Uh, now I'll get on down the street. Oh, hey, hey, just a minute, Jim. Yeah? Yeah, take a look at this handbill here. What? $5,000 reward. Yeah. What's the matter? Uh, uh, nothing, Sheriff, nothing. I, I'll, uh, I'll go take a look for those two outlaws. Yeah. I'd sure like to collect that reward. Hey, if you find them, don't run them out of town. Just lock them up. But be careful, they're dangerous. See his face when he left here, Sheriff? I sure did. He turned as red as a beet when he read that handbill. But he's not fooling me. The men he ran out of town are the ones you've been trailing. I'll bet my spurs on it. I think you're right. I'll keep watch here in town. If I nab those two, I'll let you know. Good enough. We're camped south of the old mill race, yeah. about a mile. Adios, Sheriff. Adios to you. The next morning, when Sheriff Whalen unlocked his office door, he found a shamefaced young deputy sheriff waiting on the steps. Well, come in, Bud. You're up kind of early, aren't you? Yeah, I, I didn't sleep very well last night. Oh, those bums you ran out of town last night had a five thousand dollar reward on their head. Yeah, and I knew it the minute I read the handbill. But I, I didn't have the nerve to admit it last night. Now I'm quitting. I'm not fit to be alone. No, 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 you're wrong, bud. You've learned the lesson. I won't accept your resignation. You mean that, Sheriff? I mean every word of it. But uh, <clears throat> under the circumstances, I'm uh, going to have to change your work for a spell. What do you mean? Well, I'll take over patrol work again. You can serve papers, subpoenas, and the like, eh? A process, sir. Oh, but... for a spell, at least. Sheriff, you can take the process service job yourself. I don't want it. Now, hold on, bud. Don't be so hot-headed. Uh, <clears throat> what will uh, Mary Simpson say when you tell her you quit your job? Mary and I will get along. Don't you worry about us. Here's my badge, Sheriff. I'm turning it in. All right, bud. But when you cool off, come back and get it, eh? <laughs> uh, I thought Bud had learned his lesson. Well, it looks like I was wrong. Maybe I'd better have a talk with Mary. After Bud Titus stormed out of the sheriff's office, he walked through town for about an hour, fuming to himself. As his anger subsided, he began to realize how much his fit of temper had cost him. Not only had he quit a job he liked, but he also had upset his plans to wed Mary Simpson, the daughter of a rancher. He decided to go to Mary and tell her everything that had happened. He, uh, he said I could get my badge back when I cooled off, but uh, Mary will be mighty humiliating to go back and ask for it. But if you say I should... No, I'll... not now, Bud. Not until after you've proved yourself. And I think I can help you. How? If this hadn't happened, Bud, I, I wouldn't let you risk your life. But, Bud, I know you're brave and... What are you willing. talking about? Well, early this morning, Dad and his range crew rode to the North Range to round up some strays. I rode along with him for a few miles just for the exercise. On the way back, I rode by the old mill race. And in the distance, I saw two men. Two men? They were too far for me to see them closely, but, well, they were eating by a campfire, and I'm sure that one of them was wearing a mask. You mean you think they're Tipsy Malone and Char Farrell? They could be. Oh, I know they're outlaws. 
And it's possible that they're the two you had trouble with. Where'd you say they were? In the Cedar Grove, about a mile this side of the mountain mule race. Oh, we picnic there ourselves. Yeah, yeah, I know the spot. <clears throat> well, Mary, here's where I get my job back. Get your horse saddled. I'll be back with that pair in less than 30 minutes. Then you can ride into town and see me deliver him to Sheriff Whalen. All right, but do be careful, bud. Don't let them see you riding in their direction. They won't. I'll hide my horse in the brush and go in on foot to take him. Easy, boy. Now, Mary, get a horse saddle. I'll be ready when you get back. Right. Come on, get The Lone Ranger and Toto were saddling their horses when a voice spoke sharply and the youthful deputy came from the trees. Here we are. Oh, you must have it. Man must come. Get your hands up for the All right, do as he says, Toto. Uh-huh. That's it. I'll keep him high. <laughs> well, you're not the two I expected to find, but you'll do for the time being. I'll just take your guns, mister, so you don't get any foolish ideas. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. Now to continue. When young Bud Titus was told by his sweetheart, Mary Simpson, about two men she had seen camp north of the mill race, he decided they must be the two outlaws who had caused all his trouble. Leaving her at the ranch house to wait for his return, he went to capture them. Instead of Tipsy Malone and Tar Farrell, he found the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had just saddled their horses, and quickly got the drop on them. I'll take those guns, mister. There. Are we riding to town? I am. But you're not. Where's your horse? Back in the bush. We'll pick him up on the way. You walk. I'll ride that big stallion. Just keep your hands high till I get mounted. Hold on, boy. Hey! Hey. Him lose gun. I'll take that gun. No, you don't. Get away. Let go of it. I... There. Now, get to your feet, Titus. Yeah. Yeah, pretty smart whistling to that horse, making him throw me. Now, I'll take my own gun. There. What are you going to do with me? After I unload your gun, I'll let you go. Let me go? After I tried to shoot you? You thought you were doing your duty. Only you made a mistake trying to arrest us. Right, here's your gun, bud. I don't savvy this. When you get back to town, give this to the sheriff. He'll explain. A bullet. A silver bullet. Get your horse and head back to town. Oh, and Bud. Yeah. Don't try sneaking back here. Bud and I'll be watching for you the next time. I get you. Adios. <laughs> him get red face when him show bullet to sheriff. That lad's learning fast. He let his prisoners ride the next time while he walks behind and covers them. <laughs> that right. He makes big mistake when he mounts silver. The chagrin Bud Titus headed back into the bush and got his horse. He dreaded facing Mary Simpson and admitting he had been outwitted by the men she had seen. But he decided he'd have to face her before he returned to town to see the sheriff. Meanwhile, Tipsy Malone and Tar Farrell rode through a draw and were headed toward the river when Tipsy stopped suddenly. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's wrong, Tipsy? Look who's riding this way. Hmm? Hey, that's a tin star who booted us out of town. Right. And here's where we square accounts with him. Now, quick, get in the brush. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Oh, oh, oh. Here's horse, Ty. 
Steady, boy. <laughs> yes, you recognize us, don't you, Tin Star? Yeah, I know you. You murdering polecats. Climb down off that horse and be quick about Easy, it. Easy, boy. <laughs> Take his gun, Tar. Yeah. I got it. Now search him. He might have another one in his pocket. Easy now. Hey. What's this? It's just a bullet. Tipsy. Take a look at this bullet. Yeah, what about it? It's a silver bullet. Hey, so I see. Where were you when a masked man gave you that silver bullet? None of your business where I was. Was the Indian minute. with him? The Indian named Tano? Oh, yes, but that... No. No, I mean to say he you wasn't... You said plenty. Well, go ahead. You got all you want from me? Why don't you shoot me? Not just yet. Tar, here, Tipsy. Get the rope off his saddle. We'll tie him up and leave him here while we follow the back trail and find that masked man in his right. Hey, good morning, Mary. Sheriff, I'm so glad to see you. Hey. Well, after he told me about resigning, I told him about the two men I Mary Simpson told Sheriff Whalen how Bud had gone after the two men she had seen camped in the cedar grove. And a few minutes ago, I heard a shot. He hasn't come back yet, and I'm afraid... Hey, she... Coming... He shouldn't have gone there to do his men alone. He should have come into town for me. I'd have met him on the trail. Oh, Sheriff, we've got to do something. And I'll ride down there and see what's happening. My horse is saddled. I'm going with you. You can show me where it is, eh? Get up there. Hey, you hear that? Oh, there's someone's coming for help. It's Bud. I know his voice. You're right, it is Bud. He's just ahead of us. Get up there, get up. Help! 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 Fire tipsy, it's still smoking. Yeah. There's footprints of two horses. And the big ones must have been made by that white stallion. And they've gone. Likely they figure the tin stag will get help and come back for him. Yeah, no doubt of it. What do we do? Pick up their trail and follow it. It's fresh. We won't have any trouble tracking them. What about that young deputy we tied up? Let him rot. The buzzards will find him. <laughs> come on, let's get mounted. Get your hands away. Hey, tipsy, look. The masked man. Gun him down, Tar. Oh, oh, oh. You don't get me. Shoot him, Tar. <laughs> Bud Titus told his story to Sheriff Whalen and Mary Simpson as they cut the ropes that bound him. The old sheriff had been strangely quiet during Bud's recital of his adventures. There, Bud. You're free now. Thanks. Now, Sheriff, if we travel fast, we may be able to capture the four of them. They can't be far away. You're traveling fast, Bud. I'm afraid you've made another mistake, and a mighty big one this time. Mistake? I don't understand, sir. Come by. That sounds like a... Well, it might be too late to get money. Easy <laughs> Sheriff, I don't have a gun. Those two took mine. Take my rifle, Bud. Now, thanks. I don't have time to explain things to you, Bud. But whatever you do, don't shoot the masked man of the engine. Why not? Those are orders. You better follow them. All Come right. On. Get, 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 get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. I don't hear any gun fire now. We're almost there, Sheriff. They might ambush us. Yeah, maybe so. We'll just come out here and go ahead on foot. All right, he said. Uh, keep the cover. Right. Mary, you get behind you. I will, Sheriff. Let's go. But remember what I told you, Bud? About the masked man and the engine? Yeah. Don't fire on them. That is, if they're alive. I no, won't, but I don't savvy why. We will later. Now, quiet. Look. Just ahead of us. <laughs> there they are, all four of them. Yeah, look again, Bud. Hey. The masked man and the engine have made the other two prisoners. Keep the masked man and the engine covered, Sheriff. They may open fire. Yeah, they won't when they know who's coming. Hey there, Vigo. Hey, come on, bud. All right. Well, I see you got the ordinary Mavericks. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Thought if I were getting ready to take them into town, turn them over to you. Well, I'll be glad to take them off your hands right here. 
Then Bud told me that going after you and Carter, I was afraid he'd made a big mistake. I knew those two would ambush you if they got a chance. Yes, they might have done that if it hadn't been for Bud. Yeah, how's that? Well, when we let him go, I thought he might try to come back to take us prisoners again. So Toto and I moved back into the timber ways. Yeah. And then we see Malone and Farrell come looking for us. Well, the rest was easy. But we heard gunplay. Yes, they thought they'd fight it out. <laughs> well, I see you've given them reason to regret it. Are they wounds, Sage? No, Sheriff. Well, they're not the first outlaws to learn it's not healthy to draw a gun on you. I found that out today myself. <laughs> Sheriff, I think Bud has learned a lot in the last 24 hours. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. Hey, how about it, Bud? You bet I have, Sheriff. Believe me, I'll never make the same fool mistakes again. Well, you don't need us any longer. Toto and I will be going. Come along, Toto. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, Bye. Sheriff. Adios, Adios, Mr. Adios. Sheriff, why did you say that outlaws have learned it's not healthy to draw guns on that masked man? Well, yes, Sheriff. You told me you'd explain why you didn't want me to fire on him or the Indians. <laughs> you, you can't shoot a man who gives his whole life to doing good for other people. You see, that man was the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. Listen to the Lone Ranger... Both Randy and the guards squinted against oh, the driving yeah. rain yeah. as they neared the most dangerous part yeah. of the trail. How is it, Randy? Slippery? Mighty slippery. It's our last chance to turn back. Trail narrows from here on. Oh, we can't turn back. Get up there. Get along now. We got the banker's gold to put on board the train in Cinnamon Bend. It's coming to the narrow place now, Randy. Look ahead. Yeah, I see it. We'll make it all right. Get up there. Get along now. Cross your fingers, Randy. Here's where we're awful close to the edge. Easy now. Easy now, boy. Get up there. Get along now. A sudden flash of fire and an ear-splitting explosion came without warning just ahead of the horses. The narrow trail was torn from the wall, and tons of rock crashed down with the horses, the stagecoach, and the occupants. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Thank you.